You know, this is a great day to do a lesson on clouds. Check it out. Hi, I'm Mrs. Knoll and this is second grade at Bridgeport Elementary School and today we're going to do a lesson with Mr. Croslin and it's going to be on weather and clouds. Thanks for that great introduction and what a great school and what a great class. You guys seem a lot smarter and bigger than what grade are you in? Second! Second? I'm thinking this has got to be like fifth or sixth grade the way you guys have been studying clouds. Now clouds is one of my favorite things to study because Every day, in almost every second, the sky changes. Weather changes from day to day. And clouds are a big part of that. So we're gonna investigate clouds. But you know, if you are a scientist that studies weather, you're called a meteorologist. Meteorologist. Now, that is a great thing to be. And you can go to school and become a meteorologist, but you can also be a meteorologist in your own backyard because every day weather affects us. We look at the weather to know what kind of coat to wear or not to wear a coat, to bring an umbrella, to put on gloves, and it changes every day, so you need to know the science behind weather. So scientists use some tools. Here's a tool, and we're gonna look at, we're gonna look at like three tools that they use and, and investigate. Here's the first tool that they use. You've probably seen this tool. Often it looks like this. Okay. And it has something like this right here in the bottom of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I bet you know that one side might be on C for something and the other side might be degrees F. By now you know what this is. What is this? It is a thermometer. thermometer. And I'm going to write it in red. Ther, which means heat, therm, thermometer, thermometer. Meter means to measure, a thermometer. I wonder if there's a third data No, never mind. Uh, thermometer, <laughs> okay? And here it is, it has this liquid in it. And I don't know if you know this, but when things, liquids and gases get hot, <coughs> they do this, ready? They, what is that word? They, oh, uh, sometimes, but before they explode, they <coughs> expand. expand. So when things get hot, they expand and they get bigger. And that's, that works great for a thermometer. And when things get cold, guess what they do when they get cold? They get smaller. Yeah. They, get smaller. they contract. So you got that? So I'm going to use that in blue, I think. So if it's cool or cold, they, they get small and they contract contract. And you know what? So let me see what that looks like. Let's see if you and I can try some expanding and some contracting. So students, show me what it means. When you get warm or hot, what do you do? Expand. And when you get cool, what do you do? Contract. You guys are like living thermometers. So show me, it, show me getting warm again. What is it? And show me when it gets really cold outside you. So here is one of my demonstration thermometers. And look, you guys are awesome about being living thermometers. So if you take a look at this right here, my friends, there are two different scales on this, different sides of it. See it? We have on one side, the numbers start at like minus 45 and they go all the way up to 100, 110. And on this side, the numbers are like minus 50 and go up to 230. These are two different scales. Would you guys show me, let's see, let's see, where do you think our temperature in this room is about? What do you think it is? Yeah, so what does you think about? About what? This room right here. Let's do it in Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit on this side, come on up here and tell me, what do you think the temperature is on Fahrenheit? room temperature. A little bit right about there you think? Put it up here by 70. Turn around this way so we can see. Look here. Tell me when, when I get to 70. Ready? Okay. When I get to 70? 
Tell me to stop. Right at 70. Stop. Stop. This is about the room temperature in here. So we can use this thermometer, or we could use this thermometer. Hold that one up. Or we could use this thermometer. Or I like to use this electronic thermometer here. So let's see what the room temperature is here. Come over here. Stay right there for a second. Let's see. Can you see this okay? Here we go. Let's see. I'm going to, on the room, oh, the room temperature, I think it says it's about 75 degrees. Can you see that? All right, let's see what you are like. Let me put this on your neck. Lift your head up. We'll put this on your neck and let's see what, do you think it's going to be more than 75 or less than 75? Less. Okay, let's find out. Ready? Oh, I see it. What it is, 85 degrees. What can you see it on the screen there? So this one is 85 degrees. You are a lot warmer than the room. <laughs> so let's see. Let's move him up here. Check it out. Actually, your average temperature of a person is about this much. Your body temperature is about 98, right about there. 98 degrees. Now, you don't want to, uh, you want to be careful. You don't want to put your hands in water that's hotter than this. You can put your hands in like 110 degrees. That's pretty hot. If it gets above that, you're going to burn your hands. So you want to be careful. But check this out. What happens if we go even hotter? Tell me when we get to 212 degrees. 212 degrees is when it's boiling. That's when water boils. Ready? Tell me when it's 212 degrees. Stop. Stop. Oh, I went a little bit past it. Yeah. So this is in Fahrenheit when water boils way up here. I'm going to come on down. You guys tell me body temperature is 98. Tell me when to stop, everybody. Ready? Am I there yet? No. 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 Stop. No. Stop. 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 Now let's get the room temperature. It's like in the 70s. Tell me when to stop. 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 So that's in the 70s. So this is room temperature, but there's a special song I want you to sing. I know it's your favorite song when we get down to here. When I get here, I'll tell you what it is, and you guys sing the song. Are you ready? See what the temperature is right there? 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Here's the song. I'll start it, and you guys sing it. Okay. Let it go. Let it go. You're not singing it. That's not your favorite song? No. no. That's a girl. That song. That's all that's the girls, come up and you sing it with us. So when it's 32 degrees, it's frozen. Go ahead and let's sing it. One, two, three. Let it go. Let it go. Can't work that anymore. Let it go. Let it go. Frozen. 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Thanks, boys. You got to work on this song, I'm telling you. Okay, so I've given out a bunch of different types of thermometers. And so this one has got plastic on it, and this one's plastic, with, and this one uh, has glass on it. This one I use in a, th in a refrigerator, because you want to use a thermometer to keep things cold. You want to know, you know, thermometers don't keep things cold. They let you know if things are cold. <clears throat> so this is in a refrigerator. So if you want to go to a restaurant or you want to make sure that your cold stays cold. It would be bad if you got up in the middle of the night and your refrigerator broke and the temperature read 70 degrees, all your food might spoil. So we use these to make sure our food stays what it's supposed to be. This is a thermometer we use for meat or food. Like you can stick it down inside of a chicken to see if it's done cooking or inside of a cake or a pie. So or a turkey. Or a turkey. And then this thermometer, now when you use these thermometers, I want you to be careful because they have liquid in them and glass and they could break. This liquid won't hurt you if it touches you, but you don't want to drink it. And But what's cool about this liquid is when I hold on to the bottom part right here, I don't know if you can see that, but the bottom part, when you hold on the bottom part, if you go, guess what it does? It goes up. It gets warm and goes up because it's one of those materials that expands now, this is an electronic uh, uh, laser infrared thermometer, and so it can do different things. Like, 
the table, move your hand just for a second, the table says it's 70 degrees, Whoa. but if I be still, let me go over your neck right here. We got 83, and let's see, your neck is 90, you got a hot neck. The average temperature is 98, so wanna, uh, let's see, be real still, I'm going to turn this off, I'm going to go up by your forehead, there we go, and your forehead is 90, very nice. And so, there's some place in the room that might be, where do you think the hot air goes in this room? Over there. Goes up. Let's see what the temperature is up on the ceiling. Ready? Here we go. The ceiling is 70, 70 degrees. And what about the window over there? Hotter or colder? Colder. It's a cool day. Let's see. Up, oh, 67. 67. 68. 68, yep. a little bit cooler. So you can use a thermometer. It measures the temperature of either the room or the space. See, if you were to one place that you might put it on your body that it's warm. Your neck. Your neck. How about under your arm? Let's see. Oh. I put it under your arm? Armpit? In your armpit? Yeah. Yes. Don't sweat on it. Come on, you're killing Wait, me. the dot? The dot, yeah. Put the red dot. It, that's actually a bubble of liquid. And let's let it warm there for 10 seconds. Keep it in there. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Take it out and see if it went up. It probably went up. All right, let's try another experiment. Go ahead and look around the room. Let me give you like two minutes to go see if you can find different temperatures in the room. Different temperatures in the room with your thermometer. Go ahead. Try the window, try the doors, try, try the lights. So we've been talking about temperature, but I think we need to look at some other instruments that we need to learn about for clouds. And these are rain gauges. And this keeps track. You could put this in your yard, and when it rains, you can measure how much rain you get in one day. Now, these don't go do very good if you put them indoors. Why? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, why? The, the roof thing that's going to cover the rain. The roof covers it. and you, they, you wouldn't get no rain indoors. It wouldn't be good to put them in the garage. Yeah. Where's the best place to put these? Outside. Yes? Outside. Outside in the yard. And I'll tell you, who likes to know these? Farmers and people with gardens. Because if I plant a bunch of crops and I don't have any rain, I start worrying about my crops. If I get like an inch of rain in, in one week, that's good. If I get five inches of rain in one day, that's bad. That could be a flood. So a rain gauge along with a thermometer are instruments that we can help us with the weather. And I have one more of that instrument. And these are kind of cool and kind of weird. This is an instrument. It doesn't measure temperature. It doesn't measure rain. rain. See what happens if I, what do you think this measures? Ready? Here we go. Did anything change on this? Oh. Yes or no? You see anything? What changed? The little ball goes up. And the down. little ball goes up. So what do you think this measures? The air. The it air or the wind. Oh. So this measures, we could take this outside. I'll let you do that. You can borrow these. Take it outside. And it's supposed to be really windy today. So no wind, it's not moving up. A lot of wind. Did you see it go up? This can measure the wind. So we can look at a thermometer to measure the heat, a rain gauge to measure the, the rain, and a wind gauge to measure how fast we are. But what does this have to do with clouds? Let's take a look at your cloud charts. Just hold it below your mouth and blow into it. Here, and turn it around so other people at your table can see it, okay? Hold it like this, and then they can see the middle. Go ahead, and they can watch. Blow into it. Try again. Blow across the top of it. Blow across the top of it, good. Pass them around. Okay. Here, guys. Here's the rain gauge. You take this part, you stick it into the ground so it stands up, and then when it rains, it fills up with rain, and it measures the number of inches or centimeters of rain. There you go. The rain collects inside. Did you try it? Okay, can I try it? All right. You guys watch that little white ball down there, okay? Ready? 
Did it move? Let's see if we can make a cloud that we can actually study. One way is to use light and water. Let's take a closer look at this. All right, so I got everybody, let's take a look. See the light up there? Yeah. Let me shine the light up. We're gonna put some water droplets and maybe you can see a cloud. Check it out, ready? You see it? Yeah. And not only that, maybe you can see, if you look way up there, let's make a bigger black dot. So let's see, look up there, oh. I can see where the black dot is, can you see? It's right in the middle. You guys feeling some raindrops falling yeah. on you? Yeah. Okay, so you can actually see it in the shot. Let's try one more. Let's, a rainbow is when the light actually goes through the water drops. And I'm going to spray it and I'll see if we can see it up in the... Uh, can you see it? Oh, I think I can. Let's check it out. No? I can. Oh, I see it. There we go. I know. There it is. Oh, I see it now. So that was kind of cool, but I got a better way we can see a cloud. Remember, a cloud, you need three things to make a cloud. Clouds, first of all, they need water, air, dust, and air pressure change. Air pressure change. So I'm going to see if I can make a cloud in this bottle right here. So I need to put a little bit of a, a water in it. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to pour a little bit of, just a little bit of water and shake it up a little bit. And let me put my, uh, my, my lid on it and let's see if I can... I got water and I'm going to change the pressure and let's see if a cloud forms. No cloud form. It does. What did I forget? Dust. Oh, I forgot to put dust so the water vapor can form on something. Here, hold that. So instead of using regular dust, I'm going to use a match and the smoke particles will turn into dust. And so uh, would you give me, would you be my, my match blower outer? Here we go. So we got a chemical change. This is good. chemical change. And now I want you to blow it out. Go ahead, blow it, blow. It smells good. There you go. We got some yeah. dust in there. It smells good. And I'm going to close like that up, please. And let's see here. Thank you. Put my matches back in my pocket. So now, do we have the three things for a cloud? What's number one? Water vapor. Water vapor. Water vapor. Water vapor. Number two. Yeah. Pressure, change. pressure change. Okay, so. All right. All right. I don't know if you noticed that yesterday we had a lot of clouds and then a high pressure came in and now the skies are clear. So if it's a high pressure, the skies get clear. I'm really putting some pressure in this one. It's getting clear. And now I'm going to squeeze it some more. High pressure, no cloud. But when the pressure changes to low, let's see what happens. Ready? One, two, three. You see it? I think we can see this better if the lights are out. So let's go turn the lights out. All right, I see some particles in it. Let me squeeze it and see if we can get it clear. One, two, three, and cloud. Mm -hmm. See that? Yeah. Cool, so we got a pressure. Squeeze it, it's clear. High pressure, clear. Change in pressure, low pressure. One, two, three, cloud. And there, my friends, is a cloud in the bottle. High pressure, it's clear. Three, two, one, change pressure, cloudy. Amazing. Amazing. So what does a cloud need? It needs water. Here's my last air pressure change. One, two, three. Ah, very cool. Cloudy day, clear day. Hey, good luck. Go outside. Check out the clouds.